Hey, g'day, I'm Tom from AAA Rubbish Removal Harvey Bay and I'm going to make you some videos about uh, rubbish removal gone wrong and um, tell you a little few stories. I've got lots of stories about um, things that people have done to me and my child and, and stuff in our job that are, are really bad. And um, so I'll start with this one. Um, the first one was a road rage attack and um, basically it started um, where a guy ran us with his car and he ended up in jail for it. So, but what actually started it was um, I was um, in a cafe in Yandina in the Sunshine Coast and um, a lady just started working there and she um, um, needed some rubbish removed and the, the owners of the restaurant recommended me to her. And so I ordered a um, sanger. I was sitting out the front on the um, out their front veranda and a little picnic table they had out the front and I went and sat down there and I was having my lunch and the girl working there said, hey, I'm on my lunch break and um, they said that you do rubbish removal. Can I talk to you about it? I said, yeah, sure. So she sat down and um, she was having her lunch. I was having my lunch and we talked about doing a rubbish removal and she said um, she's broken up with a boyfriend and she's got a crazy ex and um, that's pretty much it. Can I come and give her a quote one day? And I said, yeah, sure, no worries. And, uh, well, little did I know that um, he was really, really crazy and he'd driven past um, there and he'd seen me sitting down having lunch with her on this um, picnic bench and or something more of it, I guess. <coughs> anyway, as time went on, um, a few weeks had passed and I, um, she like gave me a number and she was teeing up a, a time for me to come and give her a quote and I... I think I went up to, to the house and I had a look at all the shit they had and it was in the bush out the back of Yandina somewhere and um, had a look at it all and left and never heard from her again. And then she stopped working at the shop and that was the end of that. And then um, months later passed, um, I was um, I brought some remote control cars and my daughter and I and my girlfriend Karen at the time, we went down to uh, Fisherman's Park at uh, Maruching or in the um, big um, park there, they had um, like basketball fields and we were playing around with these new remote control cars. And as we are doing that, I looked back at my car and I saw this Toyota Hilux, a, a white Hilux, and sitting there right close to my car. And I thought, what's he doing? What's he up to? What's that guy? And I said to Karen, what's that guy doing over there next to my car? And she said, oh, he's probably just taken down your um, details for rubbish removal because I've got signs and that posted on there. I know, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So I left it at that, and we played with our cars. And then Karen went off home, and um, me and Esther headed back to the car and um, started driving home. And as we're driving home, I looked in the mirror, and there's this white Hilux right up my ass, like really, really close, like tailgating me. Oh, if you're wondering why I drink coffee with a straw, uh, there's a couple of reasons. One was I used to have a big bushy beard, and every time I had a drink or something, I used to get my face covered in, in liquid. So then I'd have to go like that and wipe all my beard off. Um, that was one of the reasons. The other reason is I got neuralgia. I got a pinched nerve in my jaw from um, rubbish removal I was doing and a piece of steel hit me in the face and broke my jaw. So now I can't, I, I can barely talk or I, I can't even open my mouth really wide without it hurting. And it's been like that for a bit, a few years now. But anyway, getting back to the story. So, and this guy was tailgating us, and I thought, wow, he's close. And I thought, what's he up to? And then he'd back off. Then he'd tailgate us, then he'd back off. And he was doing this on and off. And we're heading down the road, and we're coming up to a roundabout, and the, the roundabout had two lanes. And one lane is to turn right, and one lane is to turn left. And I thought, well, I'll get in the right lane, and um, I'll keep an eye on him, and I'll see which way he's going, and hopefully he'll go left and I'll go right. And anyway, I was looking in the mirror, and I couldn't see where he went. So I thought, I'll oh, bugger it, I'll go straight ahead. So I went straight ahead, which is the, the way I normally would go home. And I couldn't see him in my revision mirror. Then I looked in the side mirror and he's in the side lane. Like there was no lane there. It was where the cars park on the street. And he's trying to overtake me. And I thought, what's this dickhead doing? And all I could see was his bull bar right in line with my six-year-old child, which who was in her baby seat. And I thought, oh my God, what's he doing? So anyway, there's a parked car, so he had to back off and then pull in behind us, and he's right up my ass. And I thought, what's this crazy dude doing? Anyway, so 
we kept driving and then to the next roundabout I thought I'll do it again and this time I'll watch him and I'll go I won't even indicate I'll just go wherever he's where wherever he's indicating I'll go the other way so got up to the next roundabout he didn't indicate I didn't indicate so I just swerved right went right at the last second and he followed me and I thought oh god here you go I've got some wanker you know tailgate me and give me some grief I don't know so we kept driving and that that road was good 10 kilometres long that I had to go and it was in the bush, it had some open stretches and I thought, you know what, I'll just boot it and get away from this clown and that'll be the end of it. So I did that and got away from him and I thought, yeah, that'll be it. And then I came into some windy roads where um, he couldn't overtake and I got stuck behind this old brown Mitsubishi Pajero. He's going like 40, 50 kilometres an hour in this 80k zone. I, you couldn't get past him, there was blind. Anyway, so old mate who was tailgating me called up to me and I thought, bloody hell, here we go again. So, yeah, he's up my ass again. So then we got to a, a little wooden one-way bridge and I was really stuck. And I, the, the guy behind me, I thought he was going to hit me. Like, he was so close. I was just waiting for the, the, the bump from the car. And then I thought, you know, I've had enough of this. So when I, as soon as I get over the other side, I'm going to boot it, pull over and wave him past and say, look, just get away from me, mate. So I pulled over. And as I pulled over, he pulled over. And I thought, all right, what's this guy want? And then I heard an almighty roar, like an engine rev, and he slammed, and, and the car hit as he rammed me. And he, as he rammed me, straight away, everything, the glove box, he hit me that hard, the actual glove box on my car opened, everything that was in the little pockets on the dash of my Hilux, like coins and, and, you know, sunglasses, all flew out onto the floor in my lap. And he hit me that hard, I, my head went right back like whiplash and so did my daughters. My daughters straight away screaming and crying and he hit me again and again. Three times he hit us. And then by the time he stopped, I looked in the mirror and I seen him coming and he had something wooden, some wooden thing. It looked like a, a bat or something. I didn't know quite, couldn't make out what it was. And I was in a frantic panic. My daughter's screaming and I'm like, what the hell is this guy doing? Anyway, and I, and, I, and I also noticed he had a cast on his arm. He had a broken arm. So he had a broken arm and something wooden in the other arm. And he's coming in the mirror and I looked and I'm revving my car trying to go and it wouldn't go. And I thought, what the hell? So I looked down and I saw that as he ran me, I must have bumped the gear lever on the automatic and it knocked it into neutral. So I stuck it in drive and hit it and got out of there. And then he's got back in his car and he's chasing us again. And I thought, what the hell is this guy? Want? What's going on? What's going on? Driving along. And then um, we come to an overpass and it goes over the top of the Bruce Highway, like a big bridge. So he called up to me up there, and I was doing 100, 100 plus. I'm not going to say how fast, but I was flying. And he called up to us, and um, as we got on the overpass, he came up beside me, and he swerved like that and tried to run us off the bridge. And so I, I slammed the brakes on Cundall Hall, and he pulled up about 100 metres in front. And he got out of the car, and he was running, and he had this wooden thing in his hand. And he's running towards me, and I hit it reverse. I'm reversing up, and I'm going fast as I can. And I'm yelling out the window, mate, I've got a kid in the car. Leave me alone. I've got a kid in the car. Leave me alone. What do you want? Anyway, and then um, a car came behind us. And so when the car came behind us, I think he saved our life. Um, turned out that wooden thing was a gun, and so I found out later on. But anyway, um, so that, that's what probably saved our life. This car came up behind us. And I got out and I ran to the guy, mate, there's a guy chasing us. And um, he looked and he saw the guy and he's run back and got in his car and took off. And I got home and I thought, what the hell's going on? So I went straight to um, Nambour Police Station and told them the story. And they said, look, mate, we're too busy at the moment. We haven't got time for this. You'll have to come back tomorrow. And I thought, you, you've got to be kidding me. I just got rammed. My, you know, look at my car. And they had a look at the car and said, Leah, you'll have to come back and file a complaint tomorrow. We're, we're closing now. I thought, oh, my God. So that whole night I was just felt, you know, really bad in my stomach and about the whole thing. So I, thought, I got up at like 5 o'clock in the morning and I was at uh, my mother's house then and I drove to um, Maroochydore Police Station and the guy said, yeah, yeah, tell me what happened. And, I, and he said, I can't believe Nambour wouldn't take a statement from you like last night. So anyway, I go, told them the story of what happened. So they wrote it all down and they told me to go and get a quote from a um, repairer on how much it would cost to fix my car and all the rest of it. And then uh, they said they'll try and chase him down. And I had his um, retro uh, numbers because I memorised it and I wrote it down. Um, because I saw his retro in my um, revision mirror and stuff. Anyway, so 
um, come come the next day, um, I'm driving down the um, road to the cafe where I, I met that girl. And um, as I, on my way there, I went past the house and I saw the car out the front with two blokes working on it and they had all the front end of this car off and I, I recognised it. it was the car that hit me. And I thought, oh, my God, what's that? What the hell? So I went to the shop and I told them what happened and they said, Shit, you need to go and report this. And, and they said, that's Luke Pepper. And I said, who's Luke Pepper? Anyway... And she, they said, it's the girl who used to work here, her boyfriend, he's nuts. I went, oh, my God. Anyway, and they said while I was there that he actually chased down some other guy and beat him up in a park, um, you know, because he went on a date with, date with his um, missus. And I thought, oh, my God. So anyway, um, as I did that, I went down to the police station on Nambour, tried to report again. They didn't want to know about it again. They weren't interested. And I was like, my God, why can't, what, what aren't you doing? Why aren't you taking this seriously? You know, so I went back to Maruchidor, told them, and they said, yeah, we'll get onto it. So anyway, um, after that, um, that that afternoon at five o'clock, the house that he was at where they were working on the car burnt down. It was on the news, everything. I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. And I, to this day, I still wouldn't recognise the guy if I seen him on the street. But anyway, um, turned out from what the locals say that he was cooking ice in the microwave and and it caught on fire and burnt the house down. And he's living at some guy's house renting a room. Anyway, so the guy who owned the house, from what the locals say, um, his grandmother left it to him, didn't pay insurance on the house, so the house burnt to the ground and then ended up selling it and getting the money for the land and doing whatever. And now there's a block of units that are built on there. But anyway, so the house burnt down. And um, I just thought, oh, my God, this guy is really crazy. So... So the police are looking for this guy and can't find him. He's in hiding, you know. And so I put a post on Facebook, you know, if anyone's seen the whereabouts of this person and, and the story and what happened. And the police, uh, you know, get in touch with the police or let me know. So anyway, time, time's going by. A few months later, um, the police haven't had any luck tracking him down. Um... And I get a tip off from someone on Facebook and they sent me a message saying he's staying at such and such's place. And the place he was staying at was actually uh, someone I did a free rubbish removal for, uh, a lady on there. And um, I used to do free rubbish removal for pensioners and seniors and disabled people. I used to do one a week um, as my way of giving back to the community for all the work I got. But, wow, he is staying at this house that I did the free rubbish removal for, some chick's house. Anyway, um... So I passed the info on to the cops and then they went and um, found him. They arrested him, charged him. Uh, we, uh, we got quite a few charges and then they let him back out. And so as time kept going by, um, I went to court and he did, I thought, finally, I'll get a look at this guy and see who he is and, and what he looks like, you know, for what he did to me and my daughter. And um, I had a quote for the car. It was $7,500 damage. And go to court, he didn't show up. So they um, give him another chance. So they set another court date and they didn't show up again. So then after that, they put out a warrant for his arrest. So there, as time, it's probably one year, maybe two by the time it all, they caught up with him and it all went to court and everything. Um, they got him, they arrested him, locked him up and took him straight to court and put him straight in jail. And he went to jail, in jail, I think it was around November. So he spent six months in jail. And one of the charges was um, using dangerous use of a motor vehicle and firearm. And I thought, my God, he was actually shooting at us. I didn't even hear the shots, but it must have been a twenty-two or something. I don't know. So that thing that I saw in his hand, that wooden thing, was a gun. And I wow, he was shooting at us. So... Um, that could explain why I've got a broken back window. There's a the back window on the Hilux out of one of those flip-up windows on the canopy and it was glass and that was all, all shattered and broken. So that could be what did that. Anyway, so he did six months in jail. He got ordered to pay me $7,500. And um, two years later, I still hadn't received a cent. And from one, uh, one day, I, I don't normally answer private numbers ever since that incident because uh, I've had a few weird calls from weird people but there was a private number calling at about um 7 8 o'clock in the morning i was on my way to a job or something and i answered the phone actually no i was going to talk with him i think with a friend 
for coffee. And um, I answered the phone and the uh, lady said, oh, glad you answered. We've been trying to call you. This is such and such from QCAT. I've got some good news for you. We've got the money for your car. And I went, what? Aren't you supposed to pay that in installments or something? And they said, no, we've got the full amount because um, he wasn't complying after two years. So the police incarcerated him. And uh, until all his fines are paid, they weren't letting him out. So someone came to his rescue, probably his parents, you know, something like that, or someone that had the money. And I got the seven and a half grand. To this day, the car's still all bent. Um, it's usable. It's, you know, I don't see the point in fixing it. It's got nearly 400,000 kilometres on it now. And, you know, I still wouldn't recognise the guy if I sent him. Uh, and that, that all came from sitting down and giving a quote to someone for rubbish removal who had a crazy ex who was on ice. And or I was something more than that. So that's the first thing, you know. Uh, I've got dozens of stories, but there's one. Uh, probably the worst one. Uh, uh, the next one I'll tell will be about a guy who um, uh, I was giving away free lamps that I got from a resort. They refurbished all their apartments and I got about 80-odd lamps and I was giving away two lamps for a pensioner. And this guy rocked up with him and his missus and said, me and my wife are pensioners and I'll take four. And I said, no, it's two lamps per pensioner or per household. He said, well, you didn't put household in the thing, so I'm taking four. And I said to him, mate, you're not taking any. See this baseball hat, if you don't get off my property, I'll be taking this to your head. Anyway, so he left and he reported me to the police that I stole four lamps from him. And that's another story. That's a funny story, that one. Um, and, and it was true. Because, and I had to go to the police station and, and everything with that one. That, that's a good story. That one will crack you up. Uh, anyway, so this this is the sort of things that can happen to you when you're a rubbish removalist. Um, and, you know, I, I've got dozens of stories. And as time goes on, I'll let you know some more. Anyway, I've got to get ready for work to go and remove some rubbish. Have a good day, everyone. And um, don't become a rubbish removalist unless you want to make heaps of money and have heaps of problems. Have a good day.